Another very important concept when you're building your vapor application is that of a middleware. If you go and check out the documentation, basically on the documentation, they're saying the middleware is some sort of a logic chain between the client and the vapor route handler. This means that when you make a request to a particular endpoint in action, before your request reaches the action, it will go through a series of middlewares. Now, it can be one middleware or it can be many different middlewares. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this is all structured. So let's take a look at a very simple example. We have a client, which is our iPhone application, and we have a server with one route called customers. When the client makes a request, if we have a middleware before that request actually reaches the customer's action or the customer's route, it is going to pass through middleware or a series of middlewares. So this is what the middleware is. Before the request reaches the customer's or whatever the route you're trying to reach, it will pass through those middlewares. Now, one of those examples for middlewares can be, you can have an authentication middleware. So in order to go to the customers, the authentication middleware logic is going to get executed and it will check that if the user is authenticated or not. You can even create a logging middleware and a compression middleware and so on. So you can have an array of different middleware and when your request goes through certain actions, those middleware can trigger whatever the logic is in those middleware that is going to get executed. So that is the main concept of middlewares. So now you know what middlewares are, let's go ahead and create a simple middleware in Vapor. This video is brought to you by my latest course, Mastering Full Stack iOS Development Using Sif UI in Vapor. This is a 12 hour course, which takes you on a journey of creating a full stack application. This means that you are not only going to learn the Swift UI, which is the client side, but you're also going to be learning about the server side. You will create your own server using Vapor and you will integrate it with Postgres database. You will also learn about MongoDB protecting route authentication using JWT deployment middleware, so much more, so much more. This is a complete course. If you wanted to learn full stack development, then this is the only course you need. 12 hour course, already have 200 plus students registered. If you want to register for this course, then check out the YouTube description. There's a link and click on that link, use that link to register and enroll in this course. Thank you so much. Let's get back to the video. In the last lecture, you learn about middleware. And in this lecture, we are going to go ahead and create our first middleware. The middleware that we'll be creating will be extremely simple. We will go ahead and first of all, create a new uh, folder over here, and we will call it middlewares. Inside the middleware folder, I'm just gonna go ahead and add a brand new file, a Swift file, and that middleware will be a log middleware. So this is a very basic middleware. The whole point of the middleware is to log, meaning print the message in the console, and that's it. Now we can go ahead and start implementation details of the middleware. So first of all, we will import Vapor. Next, we're going to go ahead and create the log middleware. We're just gonna call it log middleware and it is going to be conforming to the async middleware. And the reason that we are using async middleware over here and not the middleware is because async middleware is going to allow us to use async in a wait, which I actually want to use. That makes our life much more easier. Now, one of the functions that you must implement when you're conforming to async middleware is the respond function. The respond function basically means that when the request is going to go to the middleware, how is this middleware going to respond? You can see that there are a couple of different things passing to the middleware. The request, this is the request coming from the client, and the next. The next basically is going to allow us to 
invoke the actual request. In other words, if you're trying to go to a URL, let's say that you're trying to go to a slash members, then before it reaches that particular route, it's going to go to the middleware and then we can perform next and go to the members. So before it reaches the actual action or the route, it is going to go through the middleware. Now, what should we do in the middleware? Well, this is a log middleware, very, very simple middleware. We just want to go ahead and say log middleware and that's it. And what we will do over here next and finally is we will use next.respond to the actual request. And this is a very important step. So make sure that you don't omit that, you don't ignore this part. If you don't respond with the original request, then if the person is going to slash members or slash movies, then that person, that user is not going to get to the actual action because you forgot to respond. So that is why we're making sure that we are calling next.respond to the original request, all right? So this is our middleware, pretty simple. In order to use the middleware, I'm going to go into my routes and I'm just gonna go ahead and register the middleware. So app.middleware.use and whatever the name of the middleware is, which is log middleware. Now this middleware, since we are simply attaching it to app.middleware.use, this is going to get fired for every single request. So it doesn't really matter what kind of a request you have, it is always going to get fired. So let me go ahead and add a couple of different default requests. This request is for the root, and this request is for the route hello. Let's go ahead and run our application. And you will see that when our application is running, we're going to have the middleware, which is fine, which is great. And whenever we go to any route, any route, we can go to the root, we can go to the hello. First, this middleware is going to get executed. So if I go over here and I put any route over here and I send it, you can see that our log middleware is logging. If I go to a different route, let's say hello, Again, you can see the log middleware. So that is what the middleware is doing. The middleware is sitting between the client request and it fires before the request actually reaches the actual action. And we have two actions over here or two endpoints. So the middleware is fired before reaching that. And once it reaches the middleware, we print out just a message and the most important part is that the middleware is saying, oh yeah, go ahead and continue with the original request. If you don't do that, then the middleware will be stuck over here and it will never reach your actual endpoint. So this was a very simple middleware. Now in the next lecture, I'm going to create a different middleware which is going to extract the value from the authorization header. So that can be used for authorization purposes. So we're gonna look into a little bit more complicated middleware in the next lecture. Now in the last lecture, you learn about creating a very basic middleware and we created the log middleware. Now we are going to create another middleware, which is going to be able to extract information from the headers, especially the bearer token, like the token that can be used for authorization. And once again, let me be very clear, we're not really going to perform any authorization like JWT, JSON Web Tokens, that is going to be covered later on in the course. But what we're trying to do is just create a different middleware so that we can see that how that middleware can work for special routes. So I'm just gonna go and create a new middleware. And although I'm gonna name it authentication middleware, it does not mean that it's actually authenticating. We are just going to read the value from the header, authorization header, and just console.log or print it on the screen or print it on the console. So I'm just gonna call it authentication middleware. Once again, if it's a middleware, we will need to import vapor. And now I'm gonna go ahead and create the struct, which is going to be representing the 
authentication middleware. Again, it's not really going to authenticate anything. And we will need to implement the respond. Okay. So for our authentication middleware, and you are going to learn in the future that when we are performing JSON Web Tokens authentication, we need to read the values from the headers. And from the headers, which is passed in the request, we are basically looking for the authorization header. Authorization header. And authorization header will be in the form of bearer and then some sort of a token. So it shouldn't be called token. I mean, it should be like some sort of a number or alphabets and all that stuff that will be representing the token. Again, let me remind you, we're not really building an authentication middleware. I'm just showing you that these are the things that you can do with the middleware. You can do authentication using the middleware, but we're not building anything right now. So how do I get the token? Well, if you're, if you're building authentication middleware, you need the authorization header. Uh, so the good thing about Vapor is that it does provide you kind of like easy access to all of those different things. You can see that if I simply go to request.headers, some of the headers are already part of, uh, and it's strongly typed, like they're already available as properties. And what I'm looking for is the bearer token or the bearer authorization. And I can easily grab it from there. And I can say, go ahead and get the actually authorization. Authorization. And we are going to get that. Else, if you are not sending this, then, well, there's a problem. And we can say you are unauthorized. So you can't really visit this particular URL. Next, and the most important part for us is to simply print out the token. So we can simply print out the token and we can return something. I mean, return something means whatever the original request that you are requesting, maybe you're trying to get to the uh, protected page or a protected resource that you're requesting, then it's going to go to that protected resource. Okay, again, it's not really authorization, authorizing anything. It's just extracting out the token and then printing the token. And we're gonna talk about them more when we are learning about JSON web token authentication. Okay, so let's go back to our routes. Now you can see that we created the routes and these routes were just happening for every single request. But you can create a route. So you can create a route for a specific endpoint. So a good example would be maybe you want to create a route and you will want to protect all the resources and a person needs to be logged in when they're trying to access uh, members. So I can go ahead and say app.grouped and in the group, I can go ahead and pass in the middleware that I want to fire. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pass in authentication middleware. Once again, the authentication middleware is not really authenticating anything. It's just the name of the middleware, just to give you an example. And now I can say group and in the group, I can go ahead and say members. This means that this authentication middleware will only be fired when the person, when the client uh, request a resource which is going to members. And in the configure part, we can get the route. And now we can create our routes. So all of these routes that I'm creating, that will be only for the members, okay? So I'll say request async, we will go ahead and return string. And now I can return anything I want. So I can just say members, so or members index, because this is kind of like the index route but I can have some other routes also over here. And all of these routes, when invoked, uh, they will go through authentication middleware. So this is also members and hello route. So this is kind of cool because this means that you can create these routes, you can create a members route, you can create admin route, and you can pass in the authentication middleware or a list of other middlewares, an array of middlewares. Right now we're just passing one. And that middleware will only get executed when the person is going to members. So this can be a great way to perform authentication because you only want to protect certain routes, certain resources. So if I go ahead and run the application right now, 
and go to a particular route. So if I go to members right now, and I simply go, uh, it's telling me unauthorized, okay? So, and the reason it's telling me unauthorized, you know what the reason is? Well, if you go to the, over here to the authentication middleware, it's trying to access the bearer token and we're not really passing any tokens. So obviously it's unauthorized. So let me go ahead and open up Postman and we're gonna go to members. And in the headers, now I'm passing the authorization token. So using Postman, I am passing this information. Let's go ahead and invoke it. And now you can see the result that is giving me back is members index. This means that since I'm passing the authorization token, I was able to do that. If I go to members slash hello, the same thing will happen because anything under members now requires the auth authorization or authentication middleware to be fired. So anytime we go anywhere inside members, whether it's members slash hello, members slash dashboard, we don't really have that route, but anytime we go over there, it's going to be uh, calling the authentication middleware, okay? So this is the important part, and this is really going to come in handy later on when we want to protect certain routes. We want to protect Anyone goes to members, well, you better be authenticated. Anyone who wants to go to slash admin, well, you better be admin. So all of those things we definitely need to be protecting. So this is another way of creating a middleware and grouping it and applying it to only a certain group of routes.